So as you can imagine, dismantling this engine um, has involved a lot of work. Um, on this occasion, we're going to take a look at removing the cross bolts and taking out the auxiliary shaft. Yeah, um, we're at the stage now where we have all the bolts off from around the sump. We've got the crankcase nuts are all off. There was quite a lot of work on that. Now, as we have the engine here at a nice working height, we just thought we will pop off these cross bolts here. They run right the way through. Uh, I think there's 14 of them. They run <coughs> right the way through here. So you have the same nut on the other side. And because they're in pairs and because there's so many, they tighten the whole crankcase up and keep it really rigid. So what I do is I uh, get a 5 16th Whitworth spanner and I put it on the nut on the other side. Now that stops that nut from turning. I then get my uh, another 5 16th spanner, but this one's actually loose. So I can actually do it like that. The spanner falls off the other side and I take out the whole stud. And it's covered in yucky oil and the whole thing is a mess. In fact, John, you might like to show just here how big the mess is with all the, the cross bolts coming in there. Now, because we have the engine at nice working height, it's an opportunity to pop the water pump off. It's just held by two, um, again, 5 16 nuts. There's one at the top there, and there's one at the bottom. The one at the bottom gave us a bit of hassle, and we had to chisel it off, but we have it off now. So now with a wee bit of luck, a nice friendly screwdriver in here like that. Give it a bit of a tap. And off she comes. And you can see here, that's a nice healthy square on that water pump. So that water pump will come come round okay. We'll be able to restore that okay. The cover is knackered. Uh, those covers are quite expensive and hard to find now, but we'll uh, we'll manage it okay. Uh, the covers are hard to get off because these again these screws because they're screwing into aluminium would be quite difficult to get off. But we'll manage it okay. Now, again, because we have the engine in the convenient height here, we're going to try another couple of jobs here. We're going to try getting this uh, auxiliary drive out. Now, the chain has actually rusted itself around the sprocket in here, so that's going to be very difficult. Now, under normal circumstances, if this was a 15-tooth sprocket, the whole lot will drive out. All I have to do is slacken or take off four nuts at the front here, and the whole drive will drive out their bearings and all. But if that's an 18 tooth sprocket, it won't do that. And my problem is I can't really tell whether it's a 15 or an 18. So another approach is we can try undoing this big nut here. Once we have that nut off, then that shaft there will push right out and take the auxiliary drive with it. John, could you just home in there and you'll see, look, that the shaft has been center punched. See, it's center punched there and it's center punched there. So I'll just have to grind off that protrusion there and then hopefully that nut will come off. So we'll try that now. We managed to undo the center dialing on the nut and the nut is now coming happy enough. So we're going to screw the whole nut off. We're, we're lucky here because the rusty oil chain in there is stopping the whole mechanism for turning. Otherwise, you have to get a special gardener spanner which goes down in there and locates on two shoulders and stops the whole lot from rotating. So, we're, we're having a good day today. The whole knot com comes off. So, I have the big nut off. Uh, I could hit that there a thump now with this hammer. But the danger is that I might damage the threads here unless I'm very careful. So I take a fairly heavy drift like this, put it in the center, hit that a good clout. 
so the, <clears throat> what should happen here is that shaft should pass right the way through there and take out the bearing and this housing with it. But as you can imagine, the bearing on the other side here has been in there a long time. It too has been subjected to corrosion. Um, so what was happening there is whenever I was hitting this, there's a key in the shaft and the key was coming up against the bearing and it went, went quite solid. I'll show you now uh, just how that all goes together outside the, the, uh, the crankcase and then you'll understand it. But with a few good healthy clouts, it all goes. Isn't that wonderful? By the way, this is my grandfather's hammer. If you look at it closely, you'll see that it's handmade. That would have been made by my grandfather back maybe, maybe late 40s, early 50s. The shaft, I suspect, is probably something cut out of the hedge uh, and kept in place with this wedge here. It has done a lot of work, this hammer. I love it to bits. So we have the auxiliary shaft out. Now you'll see there's a key here. Yep, you got that? And you'll see that there's a key way in this sprocket. The sprocket pushes on like that. I'm not going to actually push it on, you'll, you'll believe me. The sprocket pushes on like that and engages with that key. So, whenever I was trying to drive this central shaft out, what was happening was this key was coming up against that bearing there. That was the problem. But I knew that if I applied sufficient force with grandfather's hammer, it would come out. And it did. The irony of it is that whenever I count the sprockets here, it's actually a 15 tooth sprocket. So under normal circumstances, the whole mechanism, bearings and all, would drive out there if, if sufficient force was applied. But because this nasty chain is, uh, is rusted and seized in there, it was stopping the sprocket. And that's why I couldn't take that approach. Um, I hope you understand that. From the auxiliary drive, all we have left now is this poor wee bearing here sitting here all by itself. The poor wee thing. So I'm going to try and batter it out now. It may work, it may not. We may have to heat this. But we'll have a quick go. Again, I just get a big socket, which is roughly the right size. Hold it there like that. And apply. Enough. That socket proved to be a wee bit big, but it did most of the work. Job done.